Morning, Bill. Good morning. How, how are things in uh, South Carolina? Right? They're pretty good. You know, we have uh, air quality warnings, but the air really is pretty clear here. I've seen mm. pictures of New York, just just a big haze. You guys are really <laughs> contaminating the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah, the, well, uh, it's definitely hazy outside here. Um, and the smell of a uh, very strong smell of wood smoke. But, uh, but you're, you're, you're pretty far from the, the actual fires too, aren't you? How far about are you? About 100 over? miles. Oh, that's not so far. <laughs> no, not far enough. <laughs> well, at least but, it's not a flood of water like they have in the Ukraine that demolishing 29 villages. Yeah, that's... Uh, Smoking better than water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yes, definitely. Although we, 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 every uh, spring we we have uh, similar sort of problems. Well, not every spring, but every every once in a while there are flooding problems that appear as well because of the the uh, spring melt. You know, the, the the if we get rain on top of snow that on top of ice that just everything runs into the rivers and the rivers uh, just of well, course people in build. California of course you've had a lot of trouble with water and drought yeah. and fires and yeah. so if it's not one thing it's the other but but so far uh you know we're we're not under really any any threat other than the air quality um, and I, I did have a look at the, a map this morning that showed the particulates in the air. And as you say, New York City looks like we're much worse off than we are, even though we're only 100 miles from, from the fires here. It uh, looks like the end of the world, <laughs> New York. <laughs> well, I guess New York City has uh, their own uh, pollution problem to deal with. And then when you layer one more on top, then that's uh, really bad, I guess. Well, they might have another layer with the ocean rising. <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. Like New York City is sinking too, a couple of, I don't know, a few centimeters every year. <laughs> yeah. Manhattan is doomed. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So uh, I didn't see any new uh, versions of your uh, uh, most recent work. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I've been working on, uh, <clears throat> I have a, a page of what I'm doing, I'm actually developing a multiplication table of all those elements you can, how, how to, to multiply the basis elements together using just the algebra of the notepoems without having to, to you know, express it in the usual orthonormal basis of a, of, of a Lorentz uh, Minkowski metric. Mm -hmm. So that would be one page. I, I I might show you the multiplication table for the elements of G three or G one two. I guess it would be. Okay, I see that uh, uh, Professor Cruz is on two here. Yeah. Wait Hello. Here. Good morning. How are you? Uh, uh, I don't uh, wanted to interrupt you. Uh, oh, we were just <laughs> just talking generally about life, and then. Uh, Pollu air pollution in our <laughs> respective oh. environments. <laughs> mm. Mm. And, uh, Dr. Sochik was observing that New York City is particularly bad uh, air quality at the moment, um, but in part it's due to uh, fires here in Canada that have, uh, oh. mm. the, the fires are quite widespread in the, the forests here. Uh, mm. North, quite a bit north of where we are, but uh, but still uh, close. But for some reason, the smoke uh, the smoke seems to make pollution worse 
but quite a long ways away. How is Popocatapetl doing in Mexico? Is it quiet down now or what's happening there? My wife and I are coming to Mexico at the end of the month for, for a little while. Uh, in, uh, in Mexico, the, we are living uh, uh, in a uh, good uh, agreement with the uh, uh, volcanoes Popocatépetl, <laughs> and then uh, it, 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 <laughs> it, it is uh, constantly uh, um, uh, in erupting, and uh, then uh, there are uh, too much uh, pollution, but. Uh, mm, not uh, another kind of, uh, of, of problem. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, your home is nearer uh, to Popocatépetl here in Mexico, no? Uh, well, in Puebla. <laughs> in Puebla and in Cholula. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then uh, it is nearer uh, to volcanoes, but uh, it is not uh, the, Dangerous. Either bad in Mexico City or in Puebla, one or the other, <laughs> depending upon which way the wind blows. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Uh, it, from time to, to time, it uh, used to change. And, uh, but uh, and it is too much hot now here in Mexico. Um, uh, I don't know how, how much time the weather is uh, to stay in this uh, way, but uh, now it's <laughs> uh, <laughs> extremely hot uh, for the uh, wow. uh, uh, the temperature that we used to to have here. Then, uh, but. Uh, uh, it is uh, not normal, but uh, not uh, represents a, a, a big problem. Uh, this it's a, you're used to it, but not at this time of year, right? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. and not uh, too much rain. It, it is. Uh -huh. Study to get more rain. But at least there are no fires like in Canada. There's tremendous fires now that that, uh, that, that Dr. Cruz is uh, Dr. Yeah. Page has been talking about. It's terrible. Yeah. It's the uh, ex extent of the forests that here that are you know at risk when it's just, when it's dry. The the trees can burn uh, like. Like many many hectares, many acres of of forest can burn in in a few days, and that this uh, is normal and it occurs naturally, but it's also occurring in part because of of human uh, uh, carelessness and uh, perhaps in some cases even even uh, you know vandalism of some sort. Um, so. Uh, but when when it's so dry, it, it can be severe, and, and it releases a lot of uh, uh, particulates into the air. A lot of a lot of pollution is generated in a very short time, and uh, it can uh, for for short periods it can be much worse than than say the pollution in well, cities. Not so like much different than the volcano, I suppose. Are there fires now in Mexico uh, with 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 Popular erupting, or, or maybe there's not so many fires. I hope there's not. You're not dealing with fires there now, too. Uh, I have no uh, news about the fires in Mexico, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I don't know. I have not uh, reading too much uh, news <laughs> these days, um, but. Uh, Maybe it is not. Uh, it is. It is more so frequently in February or March uh, to have fires in in, in Mexico. Uh, and now uh, maybe some uh, uh, places uh, uh, used to uh, 
uh, get uh, fire uh, fire because uh, farmers uh, used to fire the the field uh, before to, to work mm -hmm. on it. But uh, uh, in forest, I don't uh, know that uh, um, uh, there were some uh, uh, incidents of uh, about uh, this in, in the recently time. Um, but uh, I I don't know. I, I I'm not sure about the, this. Okay. Well, uh, today I think we we're, we're going to have a presentation by both of you. I think uh, I think that was our general conclusion. Um, and Jesus, you you. We're going to start with uh, with uh, discussion of category theory, and then perhaps Dr. Socha can update us update us uh, um, at the end of the meeting about uh, work that he's he's doing on the uh, uh, <clears throat> Grassman algebra. Uh, Grassman, how, what's the right? I don't know. You have. So many different phrases that you Com compatible nilpotent. <laughs> Nilpotents, yes. Right. So compatible nilpotent basis, right? Um, okay. Well, uh, if you're you're ready, uh, yes, uh, just yes. Uh, I I I am uh, looking for the for the file here mm -hmm. in the way I can. Present, uh, but no, uh, I have uh, problems with this here. I, I am going to use my another uh, 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 computer. Uh, uh, wait a, um, a moment, please. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, this is uh, connected uh, via uh, Dropbox and not yet the, the file uh, uh, here. And then, uh, I am going to use the the, the, the other computer. <clears throat> And the idea here was uh, to um, um, present uh, uh, general concepts related uh, with the uh, uh, category theory uh, in the way that we can uh, um, uh, uh, relate this with the uh, graph uh, theory. Um, um, a moment, please.
Okay, um, maybe I'm going to close the video here and, um, okay. Um, Okay. Um, uh -huh. Okay. Uh, here uh, in this is slide, uh, I have the. <coughs> Uh, uh, I have the definition of uh, 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 category. Uh, then uh, we started with the uh, 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 concept of uh, metagraph. And the idea here is to start with the uh, uh, concepts of uh, graph that we have uh, been uh, discussed the, the um, past uh, session uh, sessions and uh, from here uh, go, uh, we uh, go to the concept of category and uh, then uh, after we go back to the concept of graph uh, but from the uh, category uh, uh, viewpoint. Then we have here uh, the standard definition that is uh, uh, from a, a direct graph. Uh, we have here a domain and a codomain and the graphic representation of this is uh, mm, uh, uh, by uh, two vertex and an arrow. Um, in, in this uh, moment, uh, we have only uh, a metagraph because uh, uh, here we have not uh, uh, all the re required uh, axioms for define a category but uh, it is important that we have uh, defined uh, this kind of uh, relation that is uh, represented in a, a direct uh, graph. Okay, um, then uh, a meta -cat category and uh, we, we uh, and discuss this, uh, I don't remember, maybe two sessions before uh, about uh, this, uh, the same slide that I have here, that the concept of meta here is for uh, considering uh, uh, in the more abstract way, the definition of category not uh, referred uh, to sets or to something uh, 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 or some uh, objects that that. Then uh, we uh, speak here uh, in general about the meta categories and uh, 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 we are adding two uh, functions that are uh, identity that is a graph uh, or a metagraph uh, going from one object to the same object and compositions that is one operation between uh, arrows in, in the graph. Then uh, with this uh, definition, we have uh, the so-called uh, um, uh, commutative uh, diagram that uh, 
is show show to us the uh, property of these uh, uh, operations in where uh, when we have defined the composition uh, then we can uh, represent this in an, a diagram like this that is a, a commutative diagram that says that uh, the uh, travel uh, from A to C uh, can be performed in an equivalent uh, way <clears throat> going uh, through B or going directly from object A to object C. Uh, I think that uh, this kind of uh, uh, elementary uh, definition of uh, a category are uh, in good uh, way for uh, after uh, relating uh, related this with uh, um, complete graphs that uh, is the idea. Uh, here uh, we have not defined what kind of operation is uh, composition, but only uh, we are establishing here that uh, we have uh, uh, these uh, operations that give to us the possibility of uh, 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 getting object C uh, starting from uh, object uh, A. Uh, okay. Uh, and here uh, is uh, uh, only a different representation uh, is in, in terms of extended uh, graph. But uh, here the idea is that uh, it is uh, nearer uh, to the tree uh, graph uh, because we take here like a root <coughs> the uh, object A, a and uh, then the graph is growing uh, down, uh, downward. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is uh, only for, for uh, um, use this uh, kind of representation uh, later uh, in where we can uh, um, clone the object Z and then uh, we can uh, uh, spread uh, the uh, paths uh, in this graph. Okay. <clears throat> Here is uh, the graph representation of uh, uh, unit, and uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, two kinds of uh, units in general in uh, uh, a category. We have here left uh, unit and right uh, unit. Uh, and uh, then uh, this uh, is shown here in this uh, commutative uh, diagram. Uh, and then uh, 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 here we uh, have uh, applied the, the unit after of uh, applying F, <coughs> excuse me, for going from uh, object A to object B, and then after uh, apply the identity and after uh, uh, the morphins uh, G. Uh, but we can uh, uh, read this in a different way. If we go from A to B in this way, uh, okay, I need uh, the arrow in the other, um, in the upper uh, uh, directions, and then after applying G. Then, uh, this uh, kind of property here uh, is uh, the property that suggests that uh, the object B can be identified with the 
identity 1b. Uh, it is important because uh, then we have an, uh, only different kind of morphemes in these uh, graphs. And then uh, the uh, differentiation between uh, vertex and edges is only uh, 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 conventional because we are uh, in all these cases uh, using the uh, 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 morphemes for the representation of this kind of graph. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But, 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 but the graph ha has the, the, the vertex B and it labels two different points that doesn't differ. So, so uh, not a unique, unique name for the, the vertices then. No, excuse me, I, I am trying to go to the uh, before uh, 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 before uh, slides, but I, uh, okay, here. Uh, uh, sorry, Professor Garrett, I lost uh, your comment. Yeah, I was just noting that the two vertices of that graph are, are labeled by the same B as, as, as two different distinct vertices of that graph. Yes, but uh, this is uh, the concept of uh, identity because uh, uh, we have here a, um, a cloning operation of this B. Then, is, uh, but I think yes. you should mention that that this this is a commutative diagram, right? Not not so much a graph, but, but oh, okay. Well, that's diagram, fine. it looks like which, a graph, is, of course, but <laughs> well, it is it has it is a graph, but but this graph represents this uh, uh, the two equations above. I was just it's wondering what, what the significance of naming two vertices of the graph with the same symbol. Uh, so, because, uh, it's okay, it's okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, because the, like the the morphism there is an identity morphism. Okay, it's fine. It's just curious. Uh, in, in fact, I uh, lost uh, here. Uh, the arrow going uh, in the opposite direction uh, from the lower B to the upper B. And uh, in fact, uh, I need to, to uh, put this in the way that the degree in this uh, commutative diagram, diagram uh, be complete. Uh, uh, yes. Sometimes uh, here uh, uh, we don't use arrows, and then uh, we uh, uh, identify here uh, like the identity between this and this. Uh, but uh, here uh, the important point uh, that uh, I want to. Um, um, uh, try to your uh, attention is that here uh, the uh, identity here is a left identity that is different from the right uh, uh, identity. And these two kind of identity is that uh, um, um, uh, quality that uh, uh, permit to us to identify these arrows with uh, the object B. The, then uh, it is uh, 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 important because it, this uh, is showing to us the uh, 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 properties of uh, one object, the uh, how uh, one object is uh, 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 cons uh, 
sorry, I lost uh, the word. How one object, uh, uh, what kind of properties uh, have one object? But even uh, we have here morphemes as an ear is the principal uh, property. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And here, here you can eliminate the objects basically and focus only it, it, on the morphisms. Excuse me. Um, Okay, I, I don't uh, listen to, to you. It's okay, I, I was just saying, you, you said you could um, identify or at least map the uh, uh, objects into the identity morphisms. And so okay. you no longer need to label the, the objects. You, because every object is labeled by the identity morphism. Okay, thanks. Okay, here is a representation of the, this property, but uh, it is showing now like a tree. Uh, you can see that uh, in a tree, we have this operation of uh, uh, identity and this operation of identity is that the uh, 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 operation that uh, clone this arrow. Uh, uh, and then uh, we uh, split the arrow going by two different uh, um, um, uh, different paths, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, here the uh, first part of the commutative diagram in the uh, before the slide is showing in the uh, in this uh, part, and here the second part of the commutative diagram is going is showing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, we uh, speak about these different uh, 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 identities uh, acting on morphemes that uh, uh, in fact are uh, in different level here in, in, in this uh, 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 diagram tree. Mm -hmm. And okay, uh, here uh, I have the uh, associativity law uh, for uh, the uh, composition operation. Uh, the composition operation in category theory is even uh, is uh, associative. Uh, when the um, this part of uh, composition exists, is exists G uh, circle of F and H circle G, then this property is uh, uh, exists, uh, uh, and uh, in one commutative diagram uh, we can. Uh, uh, show this in uh, here in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and this is the uh, associative uh, property, and uh, this uh, property can be sh shown mm -hmm. here uh, in the uh, three graph. Um, uh, we can see here the difference bet uh, between the paths in the commutative diagram, how the identity is uh, performing a different uh, role. Uh, uh, here we can see uh, that uh, uh, and 
at the end, this uh, uh, part is equivalent to, um, to this part. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am uh, trying to uh, emphasize here the, the um, uh, rule of uh, identity because uh, I think that it is important uh, uh, when we speak about uh, uh, idempotence, uh, we can uh, speak uh, uh, about them like uh, identities, but the, does, uh, those uh, idempotence are uh, different when they act to the left and they act, act to the right in, in the product. That uh, is uh, the composition in, in, uh, in that uh, algebra. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, uh, and then uh, uh, I have here an alternative definition of uh, a category, uh, but uh, only uh, thinking in the category uh, in terms of arrows. Then in this way, uh, we have uh, uh, only uh, to, uh, speak about the properties of this operation be in between arrows in the uh, uh, category. And here, uh, identity is represented by U, uh, and um, uh, here, uh, composition is uh, uh, not uh, more. Uh, 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 represented like uh, a circle, but but uh, it is represented by an uh, a product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now uh, we can define in uh, a category in category more higher uh, um, um, uh, relations uh, that uh, uh, are called the functors. Functors are relation between categories. <coughs> then here we have. Uh, the definition of a functor. Uh, functor is the relation between two categories, uh, A and B. T is the representation of the uh, uh, functor. And uh, this uh, is defined by uh, two uh, kind of, uh, of um, functions, one of them, is uh, transforming uh, the objects of, of uh, the category and the other is transforming the arrows uh, in the uh, category. And uh, this uh, uh, function have this property. The identity is uh, transformed uh, like the identity in the uh, B category and the composition in the A category is the composition in the F category of the arrows transformed by the functor. Then uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, we, we can say that uh, we need only the two uh, functions, uh, one object functions that uh, transforms the objects uh, uh, from the category A to category B via these uh, operations and in the transformation of uh, 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 the transformation functions that uh, take arrows from the category A here uh, represent, okay, here 
is the category C. Sorry for the change of notation here. Uh, uh, is uh, one arrow in the uh, category C, and then we transform to arrows in category B in this uh, way. Okay. And uh, 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 more uh, higher relation is the natural, natural transformation. The natural transformations take uh, two functors S and T acting on the uh, category C to, uh, to tr transform this to <clears throat> category D. Uh, uh, with a uh, functions that are relating these two uh, functors. And these uh, uh, functions tau uh, is uh, uh, um, have the property of take uh, objects of C and then uh, um, transforms this in the objects uh, tau c and the functors uh, from s, s c to t c. Uh, here in the diagram, I think it is uh, um, uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it is easier to understand because when in the category C, we have two objects and one morphine, then the natural uh, transformation uh, uh, that uh, is one uh, function that uh, uh, is uh, uh, change, changing the image of uh, <clears throat> the functor S, uh, in category B and uh, uh, the image of the relation F in the category B. And is the same for the functor uh, uh, T. Then the natural transformation is a functions that they take the transformed uh, uh, relation here uh, in the category C to the category B and uh, transform to the uh, relation uh, in the category B of the transformation of the uh, functor T. Uh, uh, how you, you can see this uh, kind of uh, operations uh, uh, permit to, to us to identify different kind of properties of these uh, relations that we have here. Then uh, we have uh, in, in, uh, here uh, the def definition of a category, the definition of the a relation or between categories that are the functor and the uh, uh, transformation of re relations in a category to, re to relations uh, in a new category, but uh, taken by two kind of transformation here. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, this is a diagram for this uh, uh, operation that is the uh, natural transformation. Here we have uh, uh, illustrated this. Uh, uh, in the left, we are in the category uh, uh, in the category C and the right, uh, we are in the category D. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the functor 
S and T are transformation, transformations from the category C to the category D. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the tau uh, functions, that is the natural transformation is uh, performed here in the category D. Mm -hmm. We, we, uh, we are uh, here establishing uh, different kind of uh, properties uh, uh, that uh, per, uh, permit to us to define oper operations between the graph, graphs, uh, between the categories and uh, between transformation of categories. Then uh, this uh, gives to us a, a, a rich uh, a language for uh, uh, studying some properties in different kinds of uh, mathematical objects. Mm -hmm. uh, now we go back to the concept of category, but uh, uh, I think uh, we are uh, using here uh, the so-called uh, home sets that are uh, one uh, uh, way of uh, representing the uh, morphemes and relation in the in between objects of the category. Then a, a, a home set is a, the re, a relation that we define between two different objects in a, a category. A, here in the, in, is the notation for this is a home uh, in the category C between objects uh, A and B, and it is a set uh, of functions uh, that are arrows going from uh, A to B in the category C. Uh, this uh, is the definitions uh, permit to us to re redefine the category in these terms, uh, like uh, a set of objects and a, a home set. In fact, a, a, a set of uh, pairs assigned to, um, uh, sorry, a, a, a set of uh, um, uh, um, okay, I think the, it is necessary to say it in this way. It is a set of pairs assigned to two different uh, 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 objects in, in the category C. Then when we establish this uh, uh, kind of, of pairs, we are building the home set uh, that is uh, uh, part of uh, the category. Then uh, we can understand this like the ex exercise of building arrows in the, uh, uh, within the objects of the category. And, uh, I think that it is important to take your attention here because when we define one relation between two objects, again, I am thinking in two idempotents, we are building the home set of that category. And then uh, this uh, home set have uh, the composition that are uh, a triplet uh, uh, or their uh, triplet, uh, tri triplet uh, uh, of objects 
and is a function that have a, a Cartesian product between two uh, elements of the home set, two elements of home set. And here we have uh, this uh, uh, composition represented uh, in this uh, operation in this Cartesian product of, uh, uh, from, of elements of home sets, and we get the uh, last of the first and the first terms of, of the uh, second. Mm -hmm. Then uh, here we are only represented representing the composition operation uh, 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 for uh, a category. And the identity here is uh, 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 one home set uh, applied in to one uh, element, only to one element. Then this is uh, equal to uh, uh, identity B. Here we are using the property of identity that can uh, be used to represent uh, uh, an uh, object in, in the category. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally here, uh, uh, this is uh, important uh, in the category theory because it is necessary that the if we have two different kinds of home sets then this home set are disjoint then we have not here in uh, intersection between home sets uh, of different uh, objects uh, in, in the category. Okay. Uh, then uh, we have here uh, the representation of a funtor uh, 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 using home sets these representations uh, is the transformation of the objects uh, between these two categories and the representation of the uh, 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 home sets in, in this uh, category. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, uh, property it, okay uh, in, starting in this point uh, we are going to use different kind of um, uh, pro procedures that uh, permit to us to build different kind of uh, categories uh, one uh, an important one is the uh, duality uh, principle that is uh, uh, the definition of the uh, duality of uh, statements in the category. Uh, an statement is uh, any um, um, phrase that uh, we can will within, uh, 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 between objects and arrows uh, in the category. Uh, uh, that is in, in a relation between uh, objects and home sets. Then uh, a, a, a string uh, wielded in this way uh, take to us uh, and the uh, uh, okay uh, uh, give uh, to us an statement, and then this statement, statement have a, 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 can be transformed in the dual statement 
in the way uh, shown here. Um, in the, if the statement have the uh, property uh, uh, that uh, we have um, morphins acting uh, in the object A uh, and uh, to the object B, then the dual statement is a uh, morphins going from the object B to the object A. Uh, it says that the duality principle uh, is uh, the process of rever reverse uh, uh, all uh, arrows in the category. <clears throat> then uh, this is uh, uh, re realized in this way. And then it implies that if A is a domain, in the dual statement, A is a codomain. Uh, identity is the same in both uh, uh, statements and composition is reversed. Then uh, it is uh, the principal properties of the duality principle. And, and there are uh, um, sometimes more uh, uh, properties that are listed uh, in the definition, but uh, those are the principal uh, uh, properties. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this uh, permit to us to build the uh, uh, categories that are like the opposite uh, uh, category. In this opposite category, we uh, invert uh, this, uh, we get, uh, we build this by taking the same objects in the category C and then uh, uh, assigning to each uh, arrow in the category C an opposite arrow in the new uh, category. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, with this uh, definition, I like to go to the um, uh, complete graph uh, that we uh, was uh, working uh, before uh, because uh, this duality principle uh, can permit to us to um, see this kind of, uh, of property. Here we have a graph, a complete graph. Uh, the <clears throat> and, and this uh, complete graph have two kinds of, uh, of uh, uh, relations. Uh, we can see that here, we have, uh, if we see this like a, a category, <coughs> then this is the opposite uh, category of that. Then uh, a complete graph is the uh, representation, or the graph representation of two categories, uh, two categories. Uh, these uh, categories are uh, 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 one opposite to the other uh, uh, category. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it, it is uh, Im important because uh, we can uh, uh, only uh, uh, build a complete graph considering these two kinds of categories. And then if we try to uh, relate this uh, uh, graph with uh, uh, ide idempotent algebra, then we need to use two kinds of, category, you know, of categories. 
one uh, category and the opposite. Uh, in this uh, graph, uh, we can see that uh, here the operation are opposites. Um, I have uh, I have not, uh, or I don't know if I can uh, write uh, uh, over here. Uh, I think I, uh, maybe I can annotate here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it is A, and it is uh, beam. There's one in here. Give me your other cup. Then this is uh, the the of and uh, sorry. It's a, it's a difficult to. To write here in this uh, computer, and uh, yes, the drawing with the mouse is not so easy. No, not so easy. No, <laughs> yeah. Not so easy. In that. Uh, okay, uh, I, I only. I'm going to give the comment uh, <laughs> that uh, here uh, we uh, can see this like the product between uh, B uh, uh, with A and the in this uh, in, in, in this uh, uh, graph here we have the uh, opposite product. Uh, uh, of uh, um, uh, eight with B. No? Then, uh, but then uh, we are in two different uh, kinds of uh, of categories, uh, uh, and uh, it is uh, um, because when we take uh, the product, I think uh, I can put uh, some text uh, here. No? Uh, if uh, I uh, take uh, uh, B, um, B um, uh, A, and here uh, uh, we have A, uh, A, B, Then uh, we have a different, uh, 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 we have products in uh, different uh, uh, categories. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then if we use, uh, or, or we want to get A, A, A B plus, uh, B, A, it is uh, difficult to understand this. Because um, uh, we have here operation between those two different kinds of uh, categories. Um, then um, uh, we in need to go out of, of here and then uh, uh, we need to uh, 
it is necessary to to no sorry i uh, Sorry, I uh, not, uh, not uh, uh, I can't uh, use uh, this. Uh, I need more practice uh, for. Um, for using this, uh, but uh, you know. Uh, I on, only wanted to say that we need uh, to define a new category be, between these two uh, categories. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, then uh, is the way that we can uh, get uh, a, a, a in, in the the re required uh, uh, properties. Mm -hmm. Then uh, then, then uh, in in the way that uh, we can. Uh, <coughs> Uh, go uh, further uh, in uh, with this. Uh, it is necessary to to um, um, it, it is necessary to to uh, work uh, in the wielding of this. Uh, a, a category, and I I uh, didn't get uh, to go um, uh, further uh, in this way, uh, and uh, only uh, I can uh, by now show to this uh, the, uh, the, uh, show to you this idea. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I have not uh, more uh, uh, material prepared for. Okay, of course, this last relationship is, is interesting for, for me because, you know, A, B plus B, A equal to one. <clears throat> that's, a, that's the fundamental definition that how I relate these uh, nil, nil vectors. So I, I will be able to show you. Uh, I was thinking along those same lines for that last picture where you name the uh, the vertices with <coughs> null vectors, and the edges then can be represent, represented as reflections by this 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 basic relationship, but that follows from your equation a b plus b a equal to one. I can so I have a, a table that I can show that will that might suggest more along those lines that what you've just said there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, but here uh, one step before, uh, I think the, that it is necessary to, to uh, understand what kind of category we have here. Uh, because uh, uh, here we are uh, saying that uh, uh, I, I don't know, the, maybe we are saying that the uh, direct uh, uh, sum of these uh, two categories here is taken to us uh, to the uh, entire space. 
I, I, I don't know. But okay, uh, look, I, look, I, look at this function. Take that function a b plus b a equal to one and multiply on the left by b. Okay, if you do that, then since b squared is zero, you get b a b is equal to b. So that's the mapping then that that the a b is the idempotent which maps the vertex b into the maps a into b is so b a b is equal to b. So you see then that that equation is a represent. So you can that's right represent the edge by the function that maps a into b by f of f of b is equal to b a b or f of a is equal to b a b which is b then. Yes, you you, you say sorry, professor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Multiply that equation on the left by that's right plus b a is equal to b equals b. Equals b, okay. That's right. And then, mm -hmm. but, but I have a problem with, with this because uh, in category theory, when we write, uh, say B A, we mean the composition of two morphisms. Um, but in the uh, equation that you wrote, uh, you're talking about a, a new operation called multiplication, which is not the same thing as, as uh, composition or not necessarily. Well, but, that, that, but it's, that is, it's a way of representing composition by multiplication. For example, if we take this last equation he's written down and multiply on the left and right by C, then that will take B into C then as well. So you can but, see. But the problem is that there is no, no operation called multiplication. Well, if we, but I'm suggesting that we can use, as I say, in a certain sense, I'm trying to algebraize the, the rules of category theory by defining the multiplication in that way where you get category relationships in terms of a multiplication operation. So, so if we just take this last equation, B times AB plus BA equal to B, and I'll multiply on the left and right by C, then that will take, that will be the composition operation, C, B, a, B plus B, A, all times C is equal to C, B, C, and that's equal to B. Okay, so you can see then that that will take, that's a composition then. Uh, first of all, we're mapping by the function F equal to B, A, B, that maps into B. And then we take a, a second G time by multiplying each side, left, left and right side by C, then that will take B into C then. So that, that's a composition then, a way of representing but, composition in category theory in terms of the multiplication of these no potents and item potents. I think that here the, the point is that when we define this kind of, uh, of product, we are thinking about one kind of um, morphemes here. Then uh, in terms of idempotence, I, I, uh, we have uh, um, B uh, cross uh, uh, B cross A, B cross A. Uh, and uh, then um, we have uh, uh, here the relation with uh, the uh, this uh, uh, this uh, means that uh, uh, we are going to have uh, an object in in uh, in here. Mm. 
this is the idea. And then, uh, okay, uh, I think uh, I can uh, understand uh, here uh, in this way that uh, here the related, uh, uh, I am going to use the same notation that I was using in, in the definition of uh, um, home sets. Then uh, I hear he, I have here a home set that's, that is uh, um, BA. This is a, a home set. Uh, this is a part of this uh, category. And um, then I have one relation between these two idempotents that is uh, this arrow. And this is that, uh, that uh, we are uh, uh, show, uh, representing in this way, like a BA. In, in this way, we are representing this. Then uh, when we have here this, uh, uh, um, um, this identity, in fact, we are in, in, in two different uh, categories. We have a, 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 B in one category and a plus um, a, B, A. Mm -hmm but in the opposite category. Mm -hmm. huh? Yes. This is the question. And then the, this uh, one here are in this, uh, in one space that uh, is uh, in the two categories. Then we need a morphins uh, in, between, between these two uh, uh, categories uh, going from here to here. Okay. It is a, a, a kind of this is, this is the same problem though because this operation plus where where is this operation plus? Okay, uh, when, if we uh, uh, accepted this uh, uh, functor, this is the operation plus. Yeah, plus is just a func a function. Yeah, but in, in, in category theory language is a functor. Okay. But uh, but this functor is a function of two. It, it's a pair of categories, right? It's a pair of uh, of categories. Oh, okay, and, and then we need a natural transformation, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Well, maybe there's no direct correspondence, but I don't know. Uh, you know, a composition of functions is a kind of multiplication. You can call it composition, but it defines, you know, a composition of real numbers is a multiplication three times five equals 15. You know, that, it's all functions, really. So one can develop a language how one wants to talk about it in terms of category theory or or more standard set theory, for example, as we saw composition of functions representing on a graph. Okay, but uh, this is a, uh, uh, I, I think that it, it is, uh, 
we need uh, to work in this because uh, in fact uh, we are in in two different uh, categories here and uh, here is the, the, the problem with the, this uh, kind of, uh, uh, of uh, algebra when we uh, are only multiplying with other, uh, seeing what kind of, uh, of um, category we are, uh, we are considering. Then, yeah. Okay, well, I think it's, <clears throat> uh, I think there is some close relationships that can be uh, further developed in this, in this direction. Yeah, I, I would like to, to show one, at least one or two slides that I think okay. are related to these ideas, exactly what you're talking about. So whenever you have time, we can. If, yeah. if, if you agree, I can stop here in, in my presentation. Yeah, I think that's, it was a, a very good summary of, of categories here. Well, that for, for me, it's very interesting because I'm not that all that familiar with category theory, as I've mentioned before. Uh, OK, let me see if I can. Uh, get to what I want to get to here. Okay, I want to get through here. Okay. So let's see what I want to do here. Okay, I want to get to here. Okay, let's see if I can get back now to... <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna to try to share my screen now and hopefully I'll get to what I wanna to get to here. Oops, let's see what's happening now. Okay, here it is. Can you can you see that or not? Yes, but better no. Okay. Okay, actually, this is. <clears throat> let me maybe I'll go back a little bit. Is that? Uh, let's see if I can get this out of the way here. Okay, so let I'll just show. This is what you're already familiar with, this basic table of multiplication that, that we were just talking about, AI times times AJ, well, here, AI times AJ times AI is equal to AI. So that's, that's a way of, you can think about it as reflection of one null vector AI or AJ into AI by multiplying on either side, two-sided, re representing these reflections of null vectors by, by, that, by that multiplication table. But, so the, the, what I'm talking about here, well, the idea of the new, I'm, I'm trying to simplify the language a little bit, real and complex quantum integers. It's just a, because I think, no potents and item potents are closely related to quantum mechanics. And this algebra that I'm trying to explain might well. So th these are, of course, what we've talked about before. I'm not going to spend any time on it. This table is very important. But now I want to show you well, I've, we've been through this material. By the way, in the, the uh, I made a mistake. And what I sent you, I had a negative sign here. It should be positive two over the square root of three, not negative. So all these, uh, except for this negative one, all the terms on that diagonal are positive. So you can make that correction. Okay, so, 
So what's important when I write these elements down here, here's, a, here's our basis of, of these null vector elements. So you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just taking the one, and then these are the null vectors, a1 up to a n plus one. And then the k, like a k vector, it's the product of a lambda one, lambda two, up to lambda k. What's important here is the sequence lambda one of integers, lambda one up to lambda k, which satisfy this relationship, one less than or equal lambda one, and so on less than or equal lambda k is less than n plus one. Well, if you think about that, all the elements that we're writing down here are two to the n plus one elements, just like in the geometric algebra, a total of two to the n plus one elements in the canonical basis of no potents for that geometric algebra. So what I'm doing then is I'm just, I want to get rid of the a's and just write it as, well, for example, let's express a six plus. It's generated by the, the subscripts, one which I'm denoting by one hat, two hat, up to six hat. So that's the, So, so the algebra, for example, A of three generated by three null vectors, A one hat, which I'm denoting by one hat, two hat, and three hats, which we can think about as the vertices of a graph that, that uh, Professor Cruz was talking about. So think about those as vertices, and these are the idempotents then. And it doesn't matter what numbers we're looking at, one hat times two hat is an idempotent, potent one hat times three hat, these are all item potents. And one hat times two hat times three hat is an item potent. Well, no, that's not quite an item potent. So what, I'm, what, I, what I wanted to write down here is the multiplication table for this, this algebra, the simplest case. I figured out the multiplications up to A6 plus, but that would have 36 elements in it. That's two, uh, six squared is 36. So there are basically 36 elements, which is the same. So if we're looking at a, a simpler case, which, which would be just the, alge the, the algebra of null potents generated by three null potents, null vector, null vectors A1, or which I'm denoting by one hat, two hat, and three hat. So again, one hat squared is zero, two hat squared is equal to zero, three hat squared is equal to zero. And since they're compatible, that means that one hat times two hat is an item potent. One hat, three hat is an item potent. Two hat, three hat is also an item potent. And then we have this element one hat, two hat times three hat. Okay, so I'm calling the order of these elements by the number of these pr products of, of, of these uh, nil potents that we have. So he here's a complete basis then. So, so one is just, so an order zero element is just the identity real number. So you can think about A3 plus as being a linear space over the real numbers. So, so, so this is A3 hat over the real numbers. We can also consider that over the complex numbers, but to keep things simple, we'll just consider the basis. So that's the geometric algebra one comma two. The, the simplest one. So we have then, these are the elements of that algebra of nil potents that, that we're looking at. One, which is just the real number one, the identity element. And then these are the nil potents, one hat, two hat, and three hat. Before I will write that as A1, A2, and A3, but it's, but the A's just get in the way. And we're, so we can just look at it as in, in terms of, one hat, two hat, and three hat, drop the A's. And this is this would be A12, but instead I'm just writing it as A1 hat times, or just writing as one hat times two hat, one hat times three hat, two hat times three hat, one hat times two hat times three hat. Okay, so I'm just multiple. These are the elements of the basis, the basis elements, which is given in 11 here. Okay, so we have 
you can see that there are a total of one, two, three, there are eight elements. So that's the same thing as two to the three. Well, that's just like the geometric algebra one comma two it has eight elements in it. And it, you can think about this as being a representation of that geometric algebra, but it's all in terms of these null vectors and products of these null vectors. So here it is then one. So again, any, a general element of this algebra is just taken as a basis of these eight elements then. So I'm, I'm showing in this table how to multiply all the basis elements of this algebra. So we have one, that's just the identity element, the real number one, so it's over the real numbers. <clears throat> and then we have the three nil, pot, nil, nil vectors, which have square zero, one hat, two hat, and three hat. And then we have the idempotence, one hat, two hat, one hat, three hat, two hat, three hat. And then we have this other element, one hat, two hat times three hat. Okay, and here's the multiplication table. Well, again, one hat times one hat is zero, two hat times two hat times two hat is zero, and three hat times three hat is zero. Okay, so it's the usual multiplication table. And okay, so if we take the subset, one, one hat, one hat, zero. And of course, one hat times one hat is zero. If we add a, the next null vector in there, we get this table. And then if we add three hat in there, well, you can see it gets more. <clears throat> okay, so notice that one, two hat times one hat is the same thing as one minus one hat times two hat. That's because of that relationship. One hat times two hat plus two hat times one hat is equal to one. So to get it in the standard, notice that in the standard relationship, we always write one less than two, one less than three, one hat less than two, less than three. That's an ordering of those basis elements. So I want to put it, so two hat times one hat is the same thing as one minus one hat, two hat, because of that basic relationship, which we, you wrote as a b plus b a is equal to one. And then two hat times two hat is zero. Two hat times three hat, okay, that's two is less than three, so that's in the algebra of these, these basis elements. So you see, in this case, two hat, one hat is not in this basis, it's just the reverse multiplication but it's related to one, the first element by, uh, by this one minus one hat times two hat. And okay, so we get two hat times three hat is two, the item potent. Notice that two hat, one hat, three hat, if you reduce it to, well, we could go through the multiplication, but that's equal to three hat minus one hat, two hat times three hat. So again, if you multiply three hat times one hat times two hat, represented in terms of these basis elements of the algebra, it's equal to two minus, that's, a, that's a, the null potent null vector or null, ve uh, null vector two hat minus one hat plus one hat, two hat times three hat. Okay, now we go three hat times three hat, uh, three hat times three hat. Oh no, where is it? Three, oh here, three hat times three hat is zero. Yeah, uh, three hat times one hat, two hat is this re relationship. Three hat, one hat, three hat is three. So you can see how we're thinking about for example, you can map the null vector one hat, or you mul multiply, take the null vector two, multiply on the left and right by one hat, and that maps it into one. Okay, let's see, how do we see that? Yeah, that's this mapping, two hat, one hat, two hat 
is equal to two. Okay, so that maps the vertex one uh, into the vertex two. So that's like composition and your, all your compositions can be represented using this multiplication table of three vertices, one hat, two hat, and three hat. Well, anyway, so this is, a, this is I, I'm actually, I can write this, I can do the multiplications up to one hat, two hat, up to six hat, we could write down in such a multiplication table, but it's now the inter <clears throat> like I say, in a, in a certain sense, looking at this basis, A3 plus, that's the composition of three compatible null vectors, positive uh, composition, uh, or a kind of positively uh, compatible null vectors, one hat, two hat, and three hat. And we can extend this table. Of course, the idea is that by taking any real, any integer and just putting a hat over it, you, you know, it doesn't have to be one, two, three. It could be one, six, seven, eight. You know, you, you generate these, these, these. So that's why in, in more generally, you can think about what I would call quantum integers. You're just putting a quant, and they have the same multiplication rules that we have in this table here. It doesn't matter whether we call them one hat, two hat, three hat, or four hat, seven hat, 10 hat. But, but of course here, I'm only using up to six. If you go up past 10, then, you, then the notation will, won't work because, because these, if you put a hat over any of these numbers between one and nine, they become null vectors then, uh, and, and so on. So I don't know, this is what I would think about this multiplication table in relationship to what uh, Hazes has presented today. I think it's, it's very interesting. We can write any function, for example, to map the null vector one, two into one, we, we, we can think about that as being reflections by the on left and right multiplication by one hat, two hat, one hat is equal to one hat. And then a composition, you can multiply, for example, three hat, two hat, three hat is equal to three. So that's a composition of the, we can draw a similar type graphs uh, of the relationships representing reflections in the algebra of null poems, A3 plus. But of course, it can have any number of them. And you can expand this table to infinite number of dimensions if you want to, but it becomes, but, but I, I want to emphasize that this multiplication that we're looking at really is equivalent to matrix multiplication, but it's not evident when you look at it in this way, it seems like the multiplication is, is more complicated, but it's the, I want to emphasize that it really is a different way of expressing matrix multiplication, though I don't think I've got the simplest relationships completely understood yet, I want to emphasize that this is really equivalent to matrix multiplication because Clifford algebras themselves are all represented in terms of representation theory in terms of matrix algebra. This is another way of representing Clifford algebras. And I, I believe from the graph theory connection, we can also use it as a language for category theory. Well, we're representing composition of functions by composition of these no potent and these other more general elements. So I can I can send you this multiplication table. I I, I didn't send you this this new paper because it's really it, the most important new thing is is just this last table I, which I've written down here. Uh, can I ask a quick question here? Um, there, I'll just just underline one one part here. Uh, is is that a typo? Is that which uh, where uh, where the where it says two two one two two three minus two one oh uh two three uh, oh, is the oh last okay. row. Yeah, right here we're looking at two two no that's not a typo but I I should have written but, but why 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 do you write 
Did, didn't you say, well, actually, there's a couple of other places. Well, I, I thought you said you always write the the basis. Oh, okay, is, yeah, yeah, that's right. I written, that's right. I should have written this as one minus one, two. <laughs> yes. Yes, that was my point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got, because I, I can replace two, one by one minus one, two. The same thing, I made this mistake here. That should be written as 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 one minus two, three, because then, then it's related to this table then, right? So yeah. I tried to replace them all, but that's that's why I have more terms here. You see, this is really two hat, three hat, one hat, but representing it as in terms of these basis elements, it becomes two hat minus three hat, minus one hat, two hat, three hat. And then notice this one here, two hat, three hat times one hat, two hat is the same thing as two hat, three hat minus, Notice that these are even elements, they're the product of two elements. But if we take the product of three elements, for example, one hat, two hat times three hat, then that has to be an odd element. So that, in fact, that's one hat, two hat, three hat. But a more interesting case is, for example, uh, this one. If we multiply two hat, three hat times one hat, two hat, three hat, that's an odd element consisting of five. And you can see when you reduce it to the standard basis here, it becomes minus three hat plus one hat, two hat, three hat, which it must be because that's odd. And the, and the product is odd, but it's a combination then of, 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 of the basis elements then. So that's right, I, I should have, this should be written as one minus two hat, three hat. And the other one is, uh, where's the other one? Uh, uh, yeah, middle I, bottom. The bottom, okay. Uh, where is oh, it? one up, one up from the bottom. Yeah. That's right, two hat, one hat should be one minus, uh, yeah, two hat, one hat. Yeah, it should be one, one hat, one minus one hat, two hat. <laughs> one hat, one, one minus, one, the real number one, plus uh, one hat, two hat. <laughs> anyway, I, I can say- I, well, When I'm looking at this table, the one thing that strikes me is it doesn't, doesn't show any obvious symmetries. I think it's not. Well, that's right. I was looking at that too. But like I say, in, in a way, this is equivalent to matrix multiplication because I can, but the, the, the commit, it's not completely direct. In fact, all geometric algebras could be expressed in terms of, of these corresponding either real or complex, positively or negatively cor correlated uh, quantum algebras, what, what I'm calling them now. But that's not really quite evident from what I've been able to do yet. But there is, I'm sure there's a better way of, of expressing, like I say, linear algebra could, could be developed in terms of this new multiplication. I'm not suggesting that it should be, but it could be. <laughs> but perhaps this, this multiplication is applicable in quantum algebra, representing quantum mechanics, which is what I suspect not only that, now this relationship to category theory, I think, is very interesting. Um, so far in your paper, you haven't used terminology like quantum, quantum anything. So I was well, that's right. So in this paper, I'm actually trying to develop that idea a little more. Uh, I can send you a copy of this. Uh, it's it's very rough. That's why, and I just finished it yesterday evening. Just the basic There's graph. I think, of course, this first part is the same, so it's not different. But I have corrected this one mistake in that earlier, I think I have a minus sign in front of this element here. It should be, pl it's plus down the diagonal, in all positive terms, but that's a typo. But that's about the only mistake. Anyway, I, I will send you this, so you can have this multiplication. I'll correct this one thing that, that, uh, that, that Dr. Uh, Page is mentioned here. This in this this table. Where was it again? I can't even see it. 
Where, where was that? I don't see it anymore. <laughs> Second from the bottom uh, in the middle. Oh yeah, two one minus two one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I picked most of them up here. For example, this one was three hat times one hat, two hat times three hat is the same thing. So that again, three hat, one hat, two hat, three hat. If you reduce it down to elements in the in the basis here, it's one hat, two hat, minus one hat, three hat. Well, that's not quite obvious because you need these more general relationships. They all follow from that basic one, A, B, plus B, A is equal to one. That's all that's involved, plus the nilpotent relationship. That's what I like to emphasize. And that's really, well, again, these positively and negatively correlated null vectors, that's equivalent to matrix multiplication, but I, I have not expressed it. So it's been a while to, to, to understand these relationships because as you can see, all we're looking at reducing matrix multiplication to adding and multiplying idempotents and nilpotents, or what I call compatible nilpotents, which is like I think it's a, a kind of a new expression of basic duality relationship between vectors and covectors. And of course, that's very important in the category theory these codomains and dominion and codominions. But it's a different. A new, I don't know, have you seen anything like this before? Is it, this is new? Or I don't know how new it is. It's maybe maybe uh, Kaylee and Frobenius looked at that and they said, hey, this is just too complicated. It's, it's, and of course they didn't have quantum mechanics at that time. So they weren't interested in, in extending it to maybe a, 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 a language for expressing basic ideas in quantum mechanics. I guess I could have left my video here. I forgot to turn it off. To turn it back on again. But that's about all I have really to say, I guess, right now. I, I will develop this more. I become more interested. There are simple identities which you can use to get the, this table. But, but again, I emphasize they all follow from that one basic one, A times B plus B times A is equal to one. That's a very basic identity, which everything else follows from that. And the idea that there are no points. Well, the other thing is A, B plus B, A is equal to minus one. That's when we have negative compatible null vectors. <clears throat> okay. I don't have any more questions, Jesus. No, no, thank, thank you. Uh, I need uh, to uh, review more of this. Uh, uh. I will send you this 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 table, but I'll, I'll just send it with the paper. But I will correct that. I, I will correct that uh, two one. I'll, I'll put it but as it should be minus one, the real number one sure. plus one. Hat two hat. <laughs> um, Doctor Subject, do you, do you think that say in three weeks' time uh, you would be in a position to explain what you meant by the use of the word quantum? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not even sure what I mean by it. To tell you the truth, other than the fact that <laughs> I know in the relation in, in the using the Dirac notation. Uh, Null vectors uh, become involved there, don't they? I'd have to review that. Well, item potents are certainly important in the way we're, uh, in quantum mechanics. So I'm not really completely versed. I'd have to go start reviewing more quantum mechanics myself before I could say too much about that. But I hope people will pick it up. I, I don't know what else to call this, and it strikes me as being closely related. Well, as you know, Geometric algebra or these Clifford algebras are used to represent ideas in quantum mechanics by what Hestonese, Lazenby, and these people. And of course, I'm also interested in the relationship now between some of these ideas and the ISO Clifford algebras that 
uh, Dr. Santilli uh, seems to be applying in some of his work. In fact, I, I did send you an email related to those ideas uh, before this meeting. I, maybe you haven't looked at it yet. Uh, yes, I looked at it quickly. Um, uh, in your email, uh, Dr. Santilli was um, suggesting giving a talk in the seminar. Uh, on the subject that he calls um, uh, new new fusion energy. Uh, yeah, that, I think it, that, that sounds interesting to me. I like to see what he's done. And of course, I also think that his, well, this, this ISO clipper, idea of an ISO Clifford algebra has been looked at by uh, Brazilian mathematicians in, in the paper, which I've, I've put in, I've, I've referenced before. Yeah, I'm, maybe we could discuss just briefly this uh, uh, proposal to have a presentation by Dr. Santilli. I mean, I, I think it's it would be good if we could have Dr. Santilli involved. Uh, and I'm still mildly interested in, in this the ISO mathematics, although I have to admit I never completely understood like the, the approach. Uh, but, uh, oh, it's I'm, pretty confusing too, just like, uh, I think it's a little, it, it is, yeah. <laughs> but, it, but, I, but I like the paper, the Brazilian paper, because they, they, they put it down pretty clearly, actually. They related more directly than just using the, the matrix notation that Dr. Santilli has, has used. Well, the, the, ISO, the notion of ISO Clifford algebra is, May would seem pretty clear to me uh, the, the way that you presented it, mm -hmm. but but at best this is a small subset of the ISO mathematics that that. Uh, well, yes, that's Chile true. <laughs> was talking about. Um, the the other issue for me is that uh, you know while while I am interested in the notion of you know, uh, alternate methods of fusion in physics, and, uh, it's almost you know, like you could almost say, well, who, who wouldn't who wouldn't be interested if such a thing was possible? Uh, but for me, it's uh, it's very close. His suggestions and his uh, models that he's talking about are very closely related to uh, what is discussed in cold fusion. And uh, I, I so far I, I don't see anything new in Dr. Santilli's approach that is that is that is somehow different than what the cold fusion people have okay. been talking about. Well I might just say from what I understand of, of what he sent, uh, it seems like there he's building a new machine, uh, a new uh, what he calls a fusion um, machine. Well of course experimental results of that if, if they're able to complete that machine and actually get experimental results, whatever, showing that some fusion has taken place in, in its generation of energy. And of course, that would be very exciting. But again, I agree with you that it does sound a lot like cold fusion. But again, I know that Dr. Santilli has spent many years thinking about these ideas and has some results that, that seem to be, well, anyway, I think, there is some, I think the ideas are interesting and need to be at least uh, looked at. There, there are um, online forums where cold fusion is continu continuing to be discussed. Uh, these days, mostly the subject is no longer referred to as cold fusion, but rather low energy nuclear reactions. Um, so this LENR, uh, acronym for low energy nuclear reactions has a small amount of credibility and some some experimental evidence that suggests that that there are transmutations of elements that are not easily explained by um, established um, you know, theories in, in fusion so that whether to call this a uh, fusion or not is, is, is perhaps a question. Uh, but the most difficult thing is, is proving, uh, 
Well, well the thing is that it, it's also most difficult and in the in the simplest uh, experimental evidence would be for someone to produce a, a self-sustaining you know, uh, reaction of some sort. Um, and so far, you know, over all these years, no one has has done that. Um, there, there are some anomalous measurements, but experimental physics is full of anomalous results, right? <laughs> so, well, but look at look at even though the real big fusion machines, they're all they're having a very difficult time producing more energy than they put into it to pr produce the fusion. <laughs> so, the, the biggest one of the biggest problems is that. And this this was a criticism of cold fusion originally was that that if this was fusion, then the people who were doing these experiments would all be dead by now because because in order to produce the amount of energy that they claim to be producing, the nuclear reactions would be easily sufficient to be a lethal dose of radiation for anyone you know, standing within so many meters of, of such a device. Well, I, I thought uh, that, well, I guess that what neutrons are produced too, and that's what would uh, would kill people, but but, hydro, but fusion is basically, they consider it clean nuclear reaction, don't they? Yeah, so, so, then, so then you have an even more difficult problem than fusion. You, ha you have to explain how there is possibly some reaction that produces that much energy, but doesn't produce lethal doses of radiation it's that would be in terms of neutrons, i guess that are free that would but, be a, a much more difficult problem than just a, just overcoming the coulomb barrier <laughs> it's kind of like how can you possibly dissipate that much energy in some material object without generating you know, lethal radiation it, it it's a it would require you know, radical well, that's fission reactions, but fusion, I thought, are basically much cleaner. And of course, that the, the, the picture that uh, <clears throat> of the apparatus that they're supposedly building uh, is, is pretty small. So maybe I don't know how much radiation would be produced by such a machine if it produced anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, these sort of discussions have been, you know, taking place in cold fusion for most well, yeah. decades now, you know, and uh, so I, I'm just a little reluctant to, you know, to suggest another, you know, to you to use our seminars as sort of a, another place where, you know, to, to extend this discussion. It's not that I don't want discussion, but I don't know that such discussion okay. would add anything new, you know. And that, and that there that there are places on on the internet, you know, like on the internet you can find a place for everything, you know. So, so well, there are places places actually, on the internet where these could be discussed by people who are you know highly motivated to evaluate this work. But uh, I personally don't feel that qualified to even to evaluate what what he's suggesting. Yeah. Um, well, of course, the, 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 yeah, I understand your, what you're saying completely. Until you produce hard evidence that something's taking place, then you, you can't put too much faith in it. <laughs> in fact, you can't put any faith in it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so easy to confuse sort of wishful, wishful thinking with results. You know? Well, that's right. As, <laughs> as today's politics, see, uh, are, are all over the place now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think if, if he was willing to you know, try to you know, extend his his mathematical analysis or to to at least the mathematical part of it, you know, might might be relevant. Yeah, I think that's what he is suggesting there. So, and of course, I'm in. I am interested some. And the, this ISO Clifford algebra's idea. So it would be nice to just to, uh, from a mathematical so, point of view, we could. And, and if we emphasized its connection with with that, with mathematical result, I think that that's more defensible. But okay, we, I think that's you know that's if, we, if we said it, you know, if this 
happens to be mathematics that relates to fusion somehow or another, well, that's that's nice, but not not highly relevant, you know, <laughs> you know like because as you said, it's 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 a we'd have to approach it from a mathematical point of view as something abstract, since we don't have a great deal of confidence that that what he's talking about in terms of fusion might really be something real that we really have to explain in in physics like that that that's a separate issue but you know if um, if it presents in a mathematical approach that is somehow novel then you know, that some might have physical applications then i don't know maybe that's that sounds sensible to me Okay, well, that, that, that's, uh, I think that's very reasonable. Uh, do, do you agree, uh, Dr. Cruz? Yeah, yeah, so I, I <clears throat> of course, I'd like to, to hear also more what Hayes has, uh, Dr. Cruz has to say about the relation. Well, I'll develop these, I'm still working on the, uh, these ideas I'm talking about, but it'd be nice, I will send this paper that I just, had on the screen to, so you can look at it and think about the relationship to category theory. Uh, if, yes, uh, I, I like to uh, work more in, in this subject. I, I get uh, to um, um, slow steps, but uh, uh, I think that, that it is important for understand this kind of, uh, of uh, uh, ideas that uh, was presented uh, before by uh, Professor Garrett in terms of uh, how we can get a uh, relation between uh, uh, Clifford algebra and graphics. Uh, I, I think that the, the first idea it was uh, to uh, for me it was more, too much uh, uh, plausible to uh, find this re relation, but uh, this need more formalization, and then, and then uh, it is needed to. Um, work most more in this uh, um, general uh, approach, approach, but uh, it is not a, uh, an easy easy way. <laughs> then I think that we get uh, uh, short tips uh, in this, but uh, I, I like to continue to. Uh, uh, to stay working with this idea um, and then maybe present uh, so, some uh, uh, more uh, aspects of, of this in the next uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, so we continue our schedule now every three weeks. Uh, if we in three weeks time would would you, you know, have something to present uh, you know, uh, along these lines? Yes, uh, for me it's uh, okay. Three weeks. Yeah, I, I think I'll have something also. I mean, it's might mention the day after the twenty eighth is the 29th, and that's when my wife and I will be coming to Mexico for a little while at least. So, but that's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll, we'll prepare ahead of time. And so, Dr. Sojik, did you want to continue conversation with um, uh, Dr. Sintelli about the possibility of a presentation at some point okay, in the future? Okay, like, I, I can do that. I did send him the same letter I sent you, so mm -hmm. I, I, I will ask him if he can, he did mention oh, the Lie algebra aspects of it. I think it is interesting, as you say, just to, just from a mathematical point of view to understand 
the relationship between ISO Clifford algebra and the matrix version that he uses of the, of the Clifford algebra. So I think it would be appropriate for him to talk about that. Okay, and perhaps we can do that then in say six weeks time or something. Okay, something like that's that. fine with me. Okay. Uh, and when, when would our next meeting be then? Uh, I have to be careful. The 28th, uh, looking at my calendar. Yeah, let's see. 28th, Wednesday. Is that right? Yeah. 28th. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I should be, uh, I think, I think that's all right. I, I remember I had some possible conflict in, in that time period, but I have to, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if, if, if for some reason that. Yeah, I, I might have to also, because of this, yeah. I think we'll be traveling the next day, so. <laughs> yeah, you, you said you'd be traveling on the 29th. Yeah. Yeah, so perhaps we could move it, move it slightly in that week. So we keep it in the same week, but move it. Um, okay, maybe move it up a little bit. I'd rather earlier. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. would be better for me actually. Okay, I'll let I'll let uh, I'll let you both know uh, whether or not that's, or if you if you already would prefer to do that. Um, uh, I think uh, Monday the twenty sixth is definitely okay. Yeah, that would be fine. That would be better for me actually. Monday. Okay, it, it can be good for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, just to be sure. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So yes. So Monday the twenty sixth would be good then. Okay. That that sounds okay. good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. The same same time then. As, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see you then again uh, on three weeks' time, but Monday instead of Wednesday. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Have a good three weeks. Bye. 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 Three weeks. Bye.